quick note before this video starts. All the footage from this part was recorded several months before it was uploaded. This is because I recorded it all and originally posted it around the time that I played this part. However, I didn't know at the time that the credits music had a tendency to trip YouTube's copyright bots, and as such, the entire video got muted. I had to go back and post-commentate on the credits part after muting it, because my original live commentary was merged with the game audio, so in order to mute the credits, that had to be lost too. However, my original microphone broke just as I was about to do that, and so I had to wait much longer until I got a new microphone before I could finish this part. And so, you're going to hear me on two different microphones in this video. The one I'm using now, which is my new microphone, and the one you'll be hearing in a few seconds, which is the microphone that I originally used for the playthrough. So, if my voice sounds a bit different at certain points, that's why. But anyway, on with the show. <sighs> at last, it's over. King Giant Ham, not a villain, is no more, and... It seemed like Garen returned there for a few brief moments. We can all live in peace, but it came at gr a great cost. Elise, Xander, Mikoto, Kaze, Keaton, Charlotte and Benny, possibly, Lilith. They all died so this could happen. If only there was a way to save them. Azura? Uh oh. Yeah, I kind of saw this coming. This is probably it's been foreshadowed pretty heavily. I I saw this coming before the game even came out, by the way. My apologies. Uh yeah, that was pretty much inevitable. Maybe those two criticals were your final way of uh yeah. No. No, we don't even know the truth about you yet. No. Azura. I'm sorry, we couldn't save you either. <laughs> So yeah, about this happening, like I said, I kind of suspected it. Back when I first heard that, well, I mean, I didn't look into the details, but TV Trope said that both Birthright and Conquest had bittersweet endings. Back when I first saw that, my immediate reaction, literally just immediately, like right there was, Oh, Azura's gonna die, isn't she? And yeah. <laughs> well, of course. But here's Scarlet and, and Kana. I'm sure they'll all live a joyful life together, and all the Hoshiden siblings. <laughs> Sadly, though, uh, Sophie gets... Uh, yeah, and this is also why I grinded up Azura's support for Sophie, by the way. Yeah, just so uh, Sophie got to spend some final moments with her mother. Azura? Oh, don't, don't be a cutscene. Oh, it is, isn't it? Oh, that's bad. I kind of thought something like this might happen. Can I see you? Smile for me. One last time. One more smile. Before I go. That's right. Lovely. Kamui thought that he'd saved everyone, but even on this route, he's lost 
some of the most important people to him. <laughs> At least Kamui still has his has his Hoshiden family and his wife and child. No. Never again. This conflict will never happen again. Hopefully. I mean, it's not like the true mastermind behind King Giant Ham not abilities are still out there, right? 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 Azura. Yeah, sing your amazing songs again for us. Kind of strange the other siblings aren't here to react to this. I wonder how they'd all react. And so at last, it's over. Well then. And hi there, Yukimura! Yeah, you're not the puppet Yukimura that uh, he left behind. You're probably the real Yukimura. Sorry I never used you, but yeah, I was a little too late in the game. And finally, now that the war's over, Ryoma becomes king. Yes. And you vow to be much harder on your son, Shiro, who will one day inherit your legacy, because he's kind of an idiot at this point. What about Nor, though? Big brother. <laughs> hey. Yeah, but uh, your surrogate sister kind of died. I just. Sakura. Yeah. If only Kamui got to see her one final time in another world. Yeah, uh, probably just overthinking things. And now you're tearing up. What? I actually do feel quite emotional at this point, though. Uh. <laughs> but you're gonna burst out into tears, aren't you, Takumi? <laughs> No, this reminds me of, some, like, of some of Ike's cutscenes. Thank you. Yes, they have. And of Elise. Xander. Azura. Yes, finally! Now that the, uh, yeah, we only... Now that the only three evil people in that country are now all dead. Yes. Big brother. I'm kind of hoping that one of the Norian siblings is here listening to this. Hmm? Huh? And, well, uh... Ha does the others know that Azura kind of died? Hey. <laughs> yeah, we can count on him to always be broken and or a jerk. Mostly Sundarian. Um. Huh. Oh. Well then. And may whoever's ruling Nor also reign in glory. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, tears mean nothing to me. Yeah, he no. probably was. In this situation, you might want to uh, answer their questions with your own questions and then answer your own question. That tends to help. Was this a difficult war? Yes. Yes, it was. Hmm? Yes. And we didn't even see it in your artwork there. <laughs> this is going to make so much sense when I ship those two on Revelation. Yes. 
<laughs> you're kind of one to talk, Leo. Hey. What was with that whole I never hated you speech? <sighs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, yes. Kamui is kind of sorry for killing your brother, sort of. Uh huh. By the way, your sister's also dead. Your other one. Leo. Yeah, I reckon you'd get some weird looks from people at this point. Oh, dear. Hey. And now Leo turns into a Sundere. <laughs> Let's get Takumi in on this and then we can have a giant Sundere off. Yeah. Yeah. There's one more. I'm sorry. Yeah. I like that Ruan was at least acknowledging I that. See. <sighs> Unfortunately, the Bifrost staff doesn't exist on this route, so nope, sorry, can't do that. Okay, finally acknowledging Azura. This is one point that is a, just, I don't know, it feels a bit strange to me that none of the other siblings were there as she died, and you didn't get to see their first-hand reaction to it, which, I don't know, it just felt a bit strange. It almost felt like she was just totally forgotten. Uh-oh, yeah, I didn't get supports between them. Whoops! And this line must be pretty ironic if you air supported him with her. Yep, everyone's crying. Uh. Oh, yours? <laughs> huh? I know. Yes. So she is. Okay then. Yeah, I, I kind of, kind of, admittedly, also we don't want to repeat of what happened with Garen being such a chick magnet and uh, with you being queen, that could cause a gender-inverted version of the same problem. Also, also there's the fact that your first act as queen would most likely be to make all marriage between people who aren't blood siblings or adopted siblings illegal, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make tomatoes the national food, turn the flag into a giant tomato, and then, uh, uh, have tomato festivals every week. True. Yes. And off they go. You see that throne right there in the background? That's true. Didn't really play a part here, but in another world, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, you could probably you and you and Camilla should talk sometime. Huh? Now that you're not trying to kill each other. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, and we will in DLC. And this is when and now at this point I can imagine Sakura and Takumi are gonna be like, oh crap, not again! Set everyone's hair on fire, quickly! <laughs> uh, yeah, also try not to set everyone's hair on fire. That's true. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> oh, Felicia's here. Hi, Felicia. <laughs> I wonder if everyone's going to say a line here, or if it's just the story important characters. All right. Oh, probably just the story important characters. I was hoping for a full Heroes of Light and Shadow style thing where every character that you had alive says a line. Yeah, let's have fun for once. And then Kamui's probably <sighs> going to be uh, thinking about Azura. I get the feeling she's going to appear as like a ghost and be all like, 
Don't mourn for me, think about the future, blah blah. Yes, it does! Well, good thing you're awesome seeing still around. Rena Strober, I salute you. Azura. Azura? Hey. Well. No, you're supposed to say the ocean's grey waves. I believe that's the correct answer. I see. Yeah, there's something deeper down there, which the other Kamui knows about, but you don't know about yet. Huh. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> huh? Go on.
And he's going to turn around. She's going to be gone, isn't she? Yep, I knew no. it. Thank you. Azura. Yeah? Maybe. Hey. On the third path. But what did Kamui see in the water? <laughs> oh, and I just hallucinated someone was dead, but yeah. Huh. You know, I always wanted to take you flying. Hello, hello! How's the view up there? Hey! Don't fall now! <laughs> Careful! I think we've seen that that shot of the two of them together before. I told Mother, the war is over. You stood for peace. Always. We carry on your legacy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that said, our task will always be a difficult one. But no matter how hard it may be... We will succeed with you at our side. <laughs> All of us, hand in hand. <laughs> that was actually a pretty decent ending, I will admit. So, I really don't know how this is going to go, but my plan is to maybe talk about my final thoughts on this path, and, because I don't exactly care about turn counts all that much, yeah, I'm just going to go through all these, talk about my thoughts on the whole path, and then also, when the character endings come up, I'll discuss what I thought about that pairing in particular, just my final thoughts on that. So, yeah, overall, Birthright, ah. Uh... Some of you are not going to like me saying this, but of all the three routes in this game, if I was going to skip one of them, it would probably be this one. Reason being, the gameplay is definitely better than Awakening. Definitely better core gameplay, and holy crap, 31 turns on Chapter 3. This music is pretty cool, though. Core gameplay, map design, better than Awakening, but the, there's something about it that's just... The actual world map system isn't quite as deep as Awakening, so as far as a sort of a more like a sandbox Fire Emblem game goes, one that you can play a bit more casually, I still kind of like Awakening slightly more. I will admit, I do like the characters in this a bit better, uh, and the, the new classes. The new classes are definitely a highlight of this route, definitely. Definitely help make up for the unremarkable objectives and things like that. Oh look, it even lists Invasion 1, that's kind of cool. But overall, there are a lot of people who say who like this route because they think it has a better story than Conquest. To me, I kind of dispute that. I think both storylines have problems. I think this has just as many problems as Conquest does overall. Particularly, a lot of the deaths feel very forced and pointless. And even Azura at the end, just there was not enough fanfare over that. The siblings just didn't come in and react to it. Like, they should have been there. Just kind of feels like I don't know. It's like I guess it would hurt if you had Kamui marry her, but if you don't, it just feels a little bit. Oh hey, someone else died, and nobody really cares all that much. Really, the only death that I think was quite well done on this route was Elise, and unfortunately, Xander kind of ruined that afterwards. There's a lot of argument over Xander's sacrifice, and to me, I honestly think that he did disrespect Elise's final memory by doing what he did. That's just me personally. But yeah, just saying. So, and even then, like, the, the final parts of the story... 
Is it just me, or did the final confrontation with Camilla have almost no emotion in it at all? There was no sense of worry for her safety. She and all her retainers survived, which was quite strange. And Leo, okay, Leo's Leo's confrontation, story-wise, was great, but gameplay-wise, it was pathetic, which also leads me to one other thing that I dislike about this route. Chapters 18 through 20, as you'll be seeing in a moment here. Chapter 18, three turns could easily be done in one, absolutely pathetic, even on lunatic mode. Chapter 19, good concept, but it's very, very, very easy. Well, I did a couple of paralogs here, but yeah. Chapter 20, hands down one of the most pathetic and forgettable chapters in the entire series. That chapter is so pathetic that I forgot it existed multiple times. I actually have to really put in an effort to remember it happening. Hey look, let's throw a bunch of faceless that are absolutely no threat, give very little experience, and the whole chapter is just completely pathetic and forgettable. Yeah, I don't even know why that exists. Chapter 21 was actually better though, but it did suffer from a bit of a guy, dang it. Chapter 22 was pure filler, which was really annoying, because one thing I do like about this game's story is, unlike Awakening, there was not very much filler in this game. Oh, by the way, surprise duet, that was not on camera, because I'd already shown that on the other routes. Yeah. Surprisingly little filler in this game. Every chapter served a purpose. Every chapter you felt like you were going somewhere, you were progressing the story in some direction, and that is definitely a strength that both versions of this game have over Awakening, which had the Val mark that I still absolutely hate, because it's like, hey, let's spend a third of the game doing something that's only tangentially related to the main plot, and yeah, it's... I don't even know why that existed. But yeah. Overall, the actual endgame chapters, though, I know it's all about, yeah, reducing casualties and all that, but... I feel bad about this, but I honestly think that sneaking into the main enemy capital without really doing any major, gigantic final battles feels very underwhelming for a Fire Emblem finale. And especially a light only played three times! Only three chapters use that amazing song, which is just... I don't know, I, I will say that despite a lot of the a lot of the annoyance people have with it, I admit that it did have some bad points, but overall, I like Conquest Finale better than Birthright's. However, Birthright's actual okay, the story scenes of chapters 27, Endgame, and the actual ending, they're all very good. I like the ending. It's pretty much exactly what I expected, with all the siblings just going, you know, hey we are my Rika going, yeah, we'll, we'll do this together and reaching out a hand to Kamui. I do wish they'd said something like, no matter what happens, we'll face it as a family. That would have been a good way to end that. But that was a decent ending, except you didn't get to see what Kamui saw in the water, which is a little annoying. Maybe that's another by revelations hint, possibly. But, yeah. And the song's done. And my live commentary is done because, yeah, the credits music is unfortunately copyrighted, so I had to mute it. So, I lost my original commentary and I'm having to redo this as post-commentary. So here what I think I'm going to do is, I'm going to talk about the character endings, and on each one, I'm going to list for the paired endings, my thoughts on that pairing itself. So, yeah, it's going to go into the credits for a little bit, but then it goes right into the character endings. In all honesty, I really don't like that they've merged the character endings with the credits in more recent games. I like having them separate, even though it takes longer, because it means you can't really focus on the credits, but anyway. So yeah, it seems like characters go in order of least to most used, so here's Shura, who I never used at all. Yeah, uh, not much to say about him, just very big missed opportunity there. But at least he got to rebuild his kingdom. And Yukimura, who I also never used. Yeah. His base stats didn't look too bad though, so I could probably have got some use out of him if I wanted to, I just didn't want to because of, you know, lack of support and character development. And, well, that was kind of interesting to see a more administrative character. He pretty much is Zayas, just, uh, Hoshidu in a lot of ways. Oh, I never knew Shigure at all. Yeah, that's gonna change on Revelation. Believe me, I'm going to make an effort to use him quite a bit more. He is actually officially one of my favourite of the second gen characters. Also, that last line there, that last line is just... Yeah, wow, seriously, that is... That is just one of the most depressing endings I've read. 
Um, then there's Jacob, who I got later on this route, so, uh, didn't really get to use him all that much. So, not much to say here. I'll talk more about Jacob on Conquest, because I used him more there. But yes, he continued to serve as a butler. And, of course, he is, uh, still very loyal to Kamui. And still mostly a jerk to everyone else, but less of a jerk in the localization, thankfully. And then it's Rayna. Hi, Rayna, character who was just there and then wasn't, and then barely had any impact at all, and yeah, sorry. People tell me her support with Kamui are good, but uh, yeah, I never saw those, so she had literally no presence at all. And uh, yeah, so she just became a kitschy knight and did stuff. That is more development than she ever got during the entire main game, I'll just say that. So anyway, and there's Kiraki. I feel bad that I didn't use him that much, because Kiraki was actually pretty great, and, and from what little I did use him, I did quite like him. So hopefully on Revelation, uh, yeah, he'll be a little bit better, but uh, problem is uh, his mother is going to make his stats kind of mad, but at least I'll try and use him a bit. And it's Izana, so there's a lot of controversy over Izana's ending in the localized version. They basically rewrote it to be the punchline of a joke. In the Japanese version, it was basically just Izana went back to Izumore and he continued to troll people by them expecting him to be really, you know, lordly and him being really eccentric. So basically, he just went back to doing what he always did. Uh, I, I don't know. So, and then it's this guy. Hi, here's some air. I'm so sorry, but you're going to not exist on Revelation. I'm really, really sorry. I, I, I don't know. It's like, I don't really hate him. I just find him fairly boring overall. In fact, he probably found himself boring because he retired from combat. And he became a teacher, so... <laughs> yeah, um... Um... People are... Yes, and also, what's on the credits now is the very reason why I have to mute this part of the video. Yeah, that is really annoying. So anyway, I actually quite like Asagi because, like I said on my impressions of the characters, he is actually very, very different from Gaius and seems like he continued to pass down the size or name, which is great. And I can see that teddy bear candy there. Oh, and that's ironic that these two ended up right next to each other. Rashad actually did pretty alright for me. She was basically um, her mother with much more speed, which is very, very good. And that actually proved quite useful, both as a fighter and as a backup healer due to her getting a D rank from her uh, reclassing. Uh-oh, and she continued to follow Kamui, fearful that Mary Sue would one day possess their body. And yeah, normally I hate having characters listed as dead in the credits, but uh, it was a bit unavoidable for Kaze here. I'm really sorry, but yeah. And hi there, Mitama. I like you so much better with that hair color than your default hair color. You have no idea. But yeah, Mitama's another one of my favorite of the second generation characters, and I get the feeling that if I trained her a little bit off camera, I could probably use her in some castle teams. Only 17 victories, though. This doesn't list losses, though. I, I actually wanted to keep track of how many times everyone died. That would have been kind of funny. And Felicia. Felicia was actually very, very useful. Uh, shame she ended up unpaired. I was going to pair her with Jacob off camera, but uh, I, in the end, I didn't really have time. Much of that on Revelation, maybe. And I still love the end of this thing. She's still broken dish every now and then. Bold, I just say. That's really good. That is a pretty great line. But for the rest of her life, though, I mean, come on. You... You should take some time to relax, at least. Oh, uh, poor Sakura ended up forever alone, mostly due to Kaze dying. But yeah, uh, that will not be the case on Revelation. Don't worry, Sakura. But uh, kind of a shame she's this low, because she was still very useful, especially for her buff skill. And that ending's pretty much what you'd expect from a character like her. Nothing much to say there. And Selkie. Yeah, so thing with Selkie, I don't know, like... For some reason, even though she did inherit aptitude in my run, she still ended up kind of weaker than her father, and a lot of people have told me she's supposed to be good, so I must have got very, very unlucky there. She was still kind of useful, and I still like her... I normally don't like characters based on design, but uh, I still like her design, I just don't like her personality very much. And hey, as Kaldori actually overtook her, that really says something. Well, Kaldori is one of the first child characters I recruited, and she was way, way, way better than her father, so uh, that is pretty awesome. And apparently she inherited her uh, reincarnation's uh, habit of doing that. Interesting. 
And here's Connor. At least I like the fact that Scarlet gets to have a child. But, uh, yes, for someone who was called the Dragon God Incarnate, you really had no importance to the story at all. And yes, that last line, that last line pretty much sums them up for me, and that's why I don't really like them all that much. They just don't have that much of their personality besides that. Come on, when do we go to- Hey, it's Spear Ike! Spear Ike is awesome. I really like Spear Ike. Yes, we like Spear Ike. Headstrong Prince is pretty much how you describe him, basically. People have been telling me that uh, they see him and then Xander's son as, like, representations of the archetypes for male lords in the series. And that makes a lot of sense, actually. I might end up talking about that later. Okay, we're still not into the paired endings, though I kind of was interested in pairing uh, her with Spear Ike, actually. Sophie did quite well, uh, no doubt thanks to Azura, who for some reason gives ridiculously good inheritance. But uh, she was actually pretty great on her own, actually. She was a pretty nice character. I, I quite like using her. Oh, and uh, yeah, they studied her as an example of what not to do when taming horses. Hey, finally, the uh, the paired ending. So, uh, I really like this paired ending. Uh, not paired ending, I like this pairing. It's apparently only the third most popular for Azuma, according to polls, but uh, I really like it, and it's nice that Azuma acknowledges how much of a jerk he was being, and actually promises to be less of a jerk going to the S support. It's a pretty good support all around, plus uh, unique supports with Mitama are quite nice. As for Silas and Azura, this is not really my favourite pairing by any means, but it was alright. Yeah, I, I'd probably prefer other pairings for both Silas and for Azura. And yes, Azura continues to be mysterious and shrouded in mystery until Revelation, which we will be hopefully going into soon. And these two. Uh, yeah, I quite like this pairing, though the one dis the one thing that I will say about it that I don't really like is that uh, supports between uh, Kagero as mother to Asuki ended up having some very awkward stay in the kitchen undertones later on. But apart from that, I really like this. And the idea of Two people who used to be together getting back together, that's something that I don't really think has been in a Fire Emblem game before. And these two, I actually thought their supports were pretty good. I mostly just paired them for being two mages, but, uh, and I can't really see Hayato with anyone other than Orochi or with Sakura, but still. And that would give uh, Raja pink hair, which would be weird. But, yeah, I quite like this pairing a lot. Not my favourite, but definitely not my least favourite either. And yeah, the Wind Tribe is going to be amazing with that future side. And these two. Apparently, this is the most popular pairing for Ryoma, according to polls. I didn't know that at all, I just did this on a whim, and I actually quite liked it. One gripe is that Rinka was a little out of character in her mother-child support, but other than that, this was pretty awesome. And yeah, uh, pretty standard paired ending, but uh, Flame Tribe and Hoshi are now united. And so this pairing was a little awkward, but it was still okay overall. I still thought it was alright, but the A support being, oh, I want you to be my sibling, I was like, oh, great, really? But being a blind man, I couldn't have known that. Anyway, Mozo would probably like it in the, uh, in the Kitsune Village. Helping out farming there, I guess. And then we come to these two. Takumi and Avoro is not only one of my favourite pairings in this game, it is one of my favourite pairings in the entire series. Their supports are just flat out amazing, and I just absolutely adore this pairing. And they finally opened up, um, <laughs> Broken Tailors, I guess. And, hey, these two actually came higher. Interesting. But I actually quite like this pairing. It is another one that I was like, it's a one that I don't think is really done all that often, but I thought the supports were actually pretty good. Uh, I really liked them overall. And Hinoka was great. Hisame was, no, not Hisame, Hinata. Was alright. And these two. Uh-oh. Sabaki was appointed Chief of the Pegasus Knight. No, bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. Abort, abort, abort. And so, Hoshido's Pegasus Knight sucked for generations to come. The end. Overall though, I quite like this pairing, and uh, Hana will continue to tell, let's just say, stories about Tsubaki falling off his horse, will pass down for generations. And finally, Kamui and Scarlet. 
I actually really like this pairing. I really do. I, I know it's one of the only Kamui pairings I've seen, but I thought the supports were really good. The romance felt believable. You saw hints of it even before the S support, and in general, I thought it was a really nice pairing. So I actually really like this one. Plus, it gives a happy ending to a character who's doesn't have much opportunities to be happy in this game, let's just say. So with that, that's the end, and very soon live commentary me will take over, now the copyrighted music is gone. So, see you shortly for uh, Long Past Me at this point. So, yeah. We get to choose five characters, I actually did get spoiled in this, to become including prisoners, to become Ein Heria that I can summon from any other file. It's not just the Avatar like... Oh, okay, so the level up to the final chapter did mean something. Oh, well. Now, I want to register Kamui, definitely, because um, let's just say there might be something that I plan on doing with that later. He won't come with any weapons, though. Who else should I register? Uh, let... You know what. Let's register a Boro. Takumi will always be pretty much broken in all of the playthroughs, but uh, let's go ahead and register Oboro there, because she was amazing. Uh, should I reg... Okay, now Selkie with Aptitude, probably a good idea to register her. Probably a good idea to register Scarlet as well. And I only have one more choice. Seems too obvious to go with the... I guess since this car is kind of unique, being the child of Scarlet, I should probably register her. Yeah. Though this Sophie being the child of Azura is quite good too. I definitely want to borrow here because she earned that after the final her performance in the final battle. Question is, do I really need this Scarlet? She hasn't learned anything particularly from marrying Kamui, so maybe not actually. And then there is also Spear Ike, who's awesome. Uh, yeah. I think I might want to register Sophie, actually. So, yeah. Let's register them all. And now we return to the tile screen. Did we unlock anything new? Extras. Uh, I think we already had this. Yeah, we did not exactly unlock anything new here. Also... Yeah, we only have our save from before the final chapter. We don't even get an epilogue save. So, uh, yeah, this is the one that I'll actually have to be loading from if I want to grind up my, my castle to make it better and stuff. But, yeah, that's... that's That was that was Fire Emblem Fate's birthright. I guess I'll say more once I play Revelation overall. But, uh, yeah, it, it was still enjoyable, but I personally like the art uh, like conquest and will most likely like revelation better i feel like revelation might be virtually the same as birthright like mechanic wise but will have better map design and a more satisfying ending in some regards due to less sympathetic characters being dead so yeah of all things i don't feel as inclined to replay birthright as i would the other two routes but all that said it's still a very good fire emblem game but and core gameplay wise, definitely better than Awakening. I really wish this is like what we like Awakening had this game's pair up system and core gameplay, because then it would have been a lot better. But yeah. So I guess with that, I will see you hopefully on Revelation. There are actually, though, a few more things that I plan on doing with my Birthright team. Of course, it'll be as they were before fighting Garen. And, yeah, a couple of extra episodes. And they will not involve Wi-Fi battles, though, just yet, just saying. But they will involve battling, let's just say, some special guests. Some special guests from... from other universes. I will see you then. But until then, this is Big Clingy. Uh, I guess in this world, Hero of Hoshido, signing out.